just simply unbelievable losses. In one of the most recent mid assaults against Avdiv, Russians lost more than 300 soldiers, and overall Ukrainians were able to destroy 500 Russian tanks in this year alone. And the Minister of Defense of Russia, Sergei Shaigu, he says that Russia achieved its goals in the special military operation this year. The question is, what kind of goals? But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh. So, oi, bro, today we have, today we have a life-size pillows with one of the Russian very important political leader from the past. Some people for some reason call him dictator, but I'll leave it up <laughs> to you to decide. Long story short, these uh, pillows are called the Kimakura, and guys, do not ask me where, for, where, where, how do I know the name of these pillows. And this is basically something what you would cuddle in your bed. You put them in between your legs and be nice and cozy. You can spoon this pillow or this pillow spoons you, like this kind of activities. And yes, one of them is with Joseph Stalin. The only person I can think about who will be buying them will be a battle babushka. Maybe even a battle dedushka. And so, long story short, uh, this is honestly the only one pillow which I can show on YouTube, as there are more, believe me, with politicians and Russian some famous people, they will not be allowed to be shown on YouTube, because this will be a little bit extravagant. If you want, if you are curious to see what these kind of pillows are, you are more than welcome, at your own discretion, to visit my Patreon, link is down below. But so yes, now it's time to get serious, and now let me give you a couple of new details about the destruction of the Russian landing ship in Feodosia, which happened a couple of days ago. And then we're gonna go to the east of Ukraine, where there is an extremely big and faulty mid assault, mid assault of Russians happened in Avdiivka, and we'll finalize everything with Minister of Defense of Russia Shaigu drawing the conclusions. And first of all, as we go back to the south, specifically to Feodosia, right here is an extremely interesting picture with the consequence of the destruction of the Russian uh, landing ship Nova Cherkask, where you can see that the Russian fire brigade arrived just in time to extinguish uh, the fire. We even already have uh, these satellite images provided to us by Max Scar, which show the consequences before and after of this big destruction. As you can see, not just the ship, which has been severely affected, as Russians would call it, but it is also the port itself. And the new details, which appeared recently in the media, it is that 33 Russian sailors are considered to be missing, 19 of them are confirmed to be eliminated, and this ship was most likely not transporting Shahed drones, like previously thought, it was most likely transporting missiles and therefore the consequences were truly devastating. And if you remember, yesterday Russians already started to revenge quote-unquote uh, this attack against its landing ship in Feodosia, and one of the things they attacked was literally a civilian train station in Kherson. And today we have even more videos showing the consequences of uh, these attacks, including the crater from the impact. But later on, even some residential areas in Odessa were also severely affected, most likely as reported by Ukrainian media, as a result of them intercepting Russian drones and the debris falling down. And just overall, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainian air defense was able to intercept 32 out of 46 Russian Shehe drones. As we get closer to the actual front line, specifically to Kachovka, Ukrainians reportedly using artillery was able to destroy a pretty big fortified position of Russians. And according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians significantly decreased their presence and combat activities on the eastern, on the left side of Kherson region across Dnipro river, most likely because of these five Russian fighter jets being destroyed in less as than a week, if you remember from my last couple of episodes. And also simply because Ukrainians are gaining the momentum in this area, so Russians are trying to be very cautious. 
and one of such things as you can see from this video it is because ukrainians are using smart guided bombs called jdam which are able to precisely destroy russian ammunition warehouses far behind the front lines and well there you have it now as promised let's quickly talk about this failed russian assault which cost them 300 plus soldiers before we can summarize the results of the year according to the minister of defense of russia sergey shagu but guys, first of all, if you do want to help me, and it is very, very simple, can you please just subscribe to my channel and like this video? That's as much as I can ask you, besides obviously continuing to watch my videos and spreading the news. Thank you guys for this so much. You can also follow me on Instagram, I will be translating the address to the nation by President Putin in the new year night. The link to my Instagram is down below. And so yes, back to the East. First of all, as always, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians were able to capture some areas in Kupiansk frontline, then all the way down to Avdiivka and Marinka. Majority of those advancements are not yet confirmed by this map. Besides that, Ukrainians were also able to destroy several armored vehicles of Russians, which were trying to advance from Liman Pershi to Sinkivka. And if you remember from my yesterday's episode, Ukrainian drone was pretty much humiliating and frightening. A Russian T-90M Prorif tank with soldiers riding on its armor. And just one single drone scared them so much, without even destroying it, that everyone abandoned this tank right in the middle of the open field and started to run away. And well, guess what? Ukrainians eventually did destroy this tank and these are the consequences. And just in general, speaking about the Russian tanks, according to the representatives of the Ukrainian military, in this year alone, 2023, Ukrainians were able to destroy at least 500 of them. Most of them were consisting of T-90 and T-90Ms, one of the most modern tanks that Russian army has right now. And as always, right here is the video by the security services of Ukraine, which was just a small compilation of these Russian tanks being destroyed. Next to go even more down to Dibaltseva, located in Donetsk region, as you can see pretty far behind the front lines. And right here is yet another video by the Ukrainians, which showed the destruction of the modern Russian raiders called Zhitel and several multiple launch rocket systems called Buk. And as we go to Avdivka, right here is the video by Dobrik Live YouTube channel, which basically shows a 15-minute documentary from this area, and yes, guys, it does have English subtitles, which shows the real situation around this settlement and surrounding areas. And guys, I want to apologize because I accidentally messed up my previous episode of the Russian Dude on my Patreon, the one which is Patreon exclusive. For this reason, I'm sharing this 15-minute documentary with you guys completely for free, and also, I want to make my next fully uncensored episode of the Russian Dude on my Patreon, also completely for free, for every single one of you to enjoy, to see, because trust me, seeing uncensored footage is much more enjoyable, it is much, it just feels much more relevant. Once again, the link to my Patreon is down below and I hope you accept my apology. And so, now a couple of last words from the East before we can summarize the events of the year, according to Sergei Shaigu. Mr. Mosquito. A long story short, here is the video also from Avdiivka, where Russians lost reportedly more than 300 people in one of the most recent so-called meat assaults. As you can see, as always, this is just already at this point simply unbelievable. I just genuinely do not understand how the Russian military commandment officers and generals, they still keep doing this. Basically, they just keep sending their infantry across open fields with no protection, no ammunition, like, it feels like even without weapons at all, it just feels like it is just one big destruction for the next groups to attack somewhere else. And subsequently, obviously, once again, the losses were enormous, more than 300 reportedly were eliminated, and this was only one single assault. Please keep in mind that Russians are doing several of them every single day. So, just you can estimate the losses for yourself. And I guess the only thing which I can say is that maybe, just maybe, these tactics works for Russians. 
it is not obviously Avdiivka, the only place where they do it. And other places, Marinka. And as you can see from this map, which shows us the changes in territorial control, they were able to advance even more to the west of this settlement. And they did not stop here. They are already launching their new attacks against another settlement to the south called Nova Mikhailivka, located right here. And as for now, Ukrainians are able to repel these assaults. And just once again, as we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, they do claim that the advancement of Russians inside Marinka and even them capturing this land, it is insignificant. Because this settlement does not possess that much strategic importance, it is only for pretty much symbolic victory. Every single settlement that Russians captured in the past was pretty much for the same reason, so that Sergei Shagu can say Putin, look, we are winning. And so yes, speaking about Sergei Shagu, he did mention that Russia fully accomplished its goals of this special military operation in 2023. According to him, the main goal of Russia this year was to stop the Ukrainian counteroffensive. <laughs> not to liberate Ukraine from Ukrainians, not to free Donbass, not to keep Crimea, not to denazify or demilitarize Ukraine and Europe, but to simply stop the Ukrainian counteroffensive. How convenient. They were able to do something and then they quickly adjust their so-called goals exactly to this narrative to see like look at this yeah we did succeed we we won this year the very same institute for the study of war even released as this map it shows us total changes of territorial control in the entire 2023 russians advancements are highlighted in red and ukrainian liberations are highlighted in blue so unfortunately as you can see yes ukraine was not able to launch successful massive counteroffensive as pretty much most of us were expecting but russians did not advance either and probably one of the most funny things the one which happened recently is that russia wants to deploy its newest howitzers closer to the finnish border which is like if you remember several times every single one of them were saying like russia is not interested in the fighting against nato russia is not interested in the conflict against the european union nothing like this we're only interested in keeping ukraine intact only interested in demilitarizing denazifying ukraine like why would we ever fight against nato <laughs> and now they bring their howitzers literally <laughs> to the finnish border how do you answer this? And as you can see, this article I was able to find on Ground News, the service I was talking about in my previous video. And just guys, for you, for the viewers of this channel, the promotion is still active. You can subscribe for less than $1 per month or unlock unlimited features for 40% off. Just remember to please make sure to use my link down below. Thank you so much Ground News for sponsoring also this video. Thank you so much Patreons for watching and supporting and see you tomorrow.